Welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. We've had the Mr. David DuFord back in Springfield Mo in the studio. Dave, welcome back to the Greetings show. Greetings and salutations. Dude. I, like, I love spending time with you, man. Well, thank you. I, I do too. I really do. It's fun. You're such a great host. Uh, we've had such a nice time at uh, Chipotle a couple times. Yeah, can't, man. can't argue with that. So, Dude, th- this dude is by, like, he's very systematic. He's super disciplined. Um, good dude. Has a huge heart. Someone I trust a ton. And so if you're out there and you're like, man, I want to I want to know more about this cat, you got to start checking him out. You got to start listening to his stuff. He's one of the top sales trainers in insurance, period. And today we've been getting a lot of questions about a presentation. Yes. And so I really want to like, if you're cool with it, I'd love to walk through like a mock final expense sales presentation. Sure. That an agent can learn from and that we could share with them what you do, how you do it. We get a lot of new agents on the channel new subscribers, people getting licensed, almost licensed, right. brand new licensed or been licensed, but but they're in they're plugged into the wrong company and nobody's helping them, you know. Right. Whatever, right? Right. Right, right, right. Uh, so I don't know where you want to start, but I'm happy to role play along, whatever. Sure. So, <clears throat> a couple of things here I'll I'll say to start. This would be a presentation workable for face-to-face or over the phone, okay? okay. Whether you're in in person or over the phone selling final expense, it's the same prospect, yeah. right? There's definitely some differences with things like tonality and presence on the phone that you need to do. But the essence of what it takes to convince a stranger for them to hand their money to you, the agent, yes. it's the same no matter if you're in person or on the phone. So just want to make sure that's clear up front. That's good. That's good to note. So the first the first thing we can go through is the rapport building and introduction stage. Okay. So I think um, what I'd like to start off with, with rapport building, is this is probably the most um, overthought too much time wasted on part of the of the presentation. Uh, the goal of rapport building is not to become best friends. Like yeah. it's to get your prospect to kind of like you and be open-minded to listening to you. Mm. So for example, I don't want to spend five to 10 minutes talking about the golf clubs in the corner or the fish in the wall, right? At some point you're going to wear out your prospect and they're not going to really care. That's a good point. Yeah, now, but you want to do a little bit because you want to differentiate yourself from the other type of prospect or the other type of telemarketers that are out there. So to show that you have some kind of interest in them, mm-hmm. that uh, you're curious about them, but it's not over the top. Yeah. Very important if you're selling over the phone, I don't recommend any more than 30 to 90 seconds of it. Wow. So, you know, we like to, a lot of the leads we get, we're going to talk about the favorite hobby. They say their favorite hobby is spelunking. What is that like? You know, and then we go into a conversation. We focus the questions on the client. Like, Mm. we don't say, oh, you love spelunking. I do too. The last time I went spelunking, (laughs) I fell 100 feet off of a cliff. Boring. Like, nobody really cares. Yeah. We want to make it about the prospect first and foremost. Okay. And then once you're about 30 to 90 seconds in, and this would be true for face-to-face too, yeah. then we got to shift gears and, and do what I would call uh, the introduction, setting the table, the agenda of what, what to expect. So can I go through that script-wise Please, with you? yes. Okay. So again, the point of this is to let the client know who you are, why you're there, and why they should care. So here's how it sounds. Okay. So now I know you a little bit more, Cody. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is David Duford. Um, I am a licensed life insurance agent in the state of Tennessee. And again, the reason I'm here is because you requested this information about our new state regulated final expense programs. I've been licensed since 2011, have over 1500 clients. Mm. And the reason people do business with me is because I'm what's known as a broker. That means that I go out and shop the major companies that are out there so that I can bring you the best combination of price and coverage. So if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, Cody, this is, I'm, the, I'm your guy, does that make sense? Yes, that's good. So what does that do? What that does is it frames in the mind, this agent's not just an agent, mm-hmm. this is a specialist. This is a unique mm-hmm. selling proposition. And what that allows mm-hmm. us to do is to help us, again, you pigeonhole yourself here in a sense, but people wanna do business with specialists, the, the, the yes. people who really know about the subject matter. Yep as opposed to just another agent, right? And we're speaking the language of the client for final expense. The the language is we're all on a fixed income. I, you know, barely got much at the end of the month. So I'm showing some kind of appreciation and and understanding that getting the best bang for their buck is an important thing. And your clients love that when they hear this, by the way. So if, if, as as an agent out there, you need to say this because they like hearing that. Like this guy's getting my corner. He wants to help me find something that's not just a good value, but a good price too. Yes. Yeah. I actually had an agent years ago that he used to go in and be like, yeah, I used to be in insurance and I left and 
was a pastor for a long time and I'm thinking about getting back in it. And I'm like, dude, nobody wants to buy insurance from somebody that's thinking about getting back into insurance. You know, like yeah. either you're in it or you're not, you right. know? Um, and I like too how you framed up that you've helped a lot of people, you know, yes. 1500, you've yes. been doing it for a dozen years, you know, et cetera. Like the, that, those things are like those memory pieces of things people remember, like 1500 clients really stood out, you know? And so for the, those of you who are new and you're like, well, Dave, like I just got licensed yesterday. What do I say instead of that? Um, we were doing, these are called appeals to authority, right? Yep. I'm a licensed life insurance agent. Um, I've jumped through all the hoops, taken all the tests. The state has said I'm a bona fide life insurance agent that specializes in final expense continued script. So you can change a script up mm -hmm. and really emphasize that the fact that you are a licensed professional, okay? One other thing that's very useful if you're in person or over the phone is not just to tell, but to show, okay? Um, life insurance, final expense is the most in intangible product sold. You have to die to yeah. get it, right? Yeah. You don't really know if the thing's gonna pay out. You hope it is, but yes. you can't see it, touch it, jump into the car, experience it. It's just one of those products that, you know, it takes a lot of conceptual understanding of it. Yeah, so, somebody said, I'll, I'll interject real quick. Somebody yeah. said that um, one time, life insurance is the only product on the planet that you buy, that you personally never get to use it. Right, right. Yeah, it's yeah. unique. And it's hard to sell somebody on that concept sometime, right? Because that's not how we buy things. We buy things for immediate gratification, not yes. not like you're dead and now you're gratified. That doesn't make sense, you know? <laughs> Correct. So one of the things I like to do in, in the presentation over the phone or in person is show along with telling. So one thing I like to do in showing is if I'm in person with the prospect, I show them my license. Mm -hmm. I show them I'm regulated or I'm licensed by the state, that's right? Good. I like to show in a text message, if I'm selling over the phone, the actual business card of who I am to put a face to a name. Again, that legitimizes me in a sense, and it allows some kind of tangibility in the presentation. I think it was very, very important. That's okay? good, that's big. Yes, so do that. I, one tip that always works well too, um, you could do this over the phone, but in person as well. Show a picture of your family, again, part of our, our, our shtick here is to not be the typical salesperson, right? Yeah. So it's hard to be, you know, to treat somebody, you know, unfairly as a salesperson when you show them you've got a family, and even if it's just you and the dogs, you know? Sure. It's, it's differentiating, it's humanizing. Yeah, People are gonna, time. like, I love dogs too, you know? Yes. So do that in addition to showing your license. Cause yes. that's, cause again, who, what is the most important thing, Cody, when it comes to insurance sales? Is it the product? Or is it you? Yeah, it's you. It's you. It's always you. Product comes second. So we got him introduced. Should we go into the most important part of the presentation? Yeah, let's do it. I love it. This okay. is phenomenal so far, by the way. I hope you guys are taking notes, man. Me. So what I go into now is what I call the pre-qualifying and fact-finding stage. My job is to figure out if the person across the table is a qualified prospect that will buy or if they're an unqualified suspect that probably won't buy. Mm. And I use terminology like high odds and low odds. You know, I guess sometimes you could find somebody that you thought was unqualified that will buy, but it's a very low odds chance of buying. Yeah. Just like somebody who is qualified may not buy because of something. So there's a high odds, low odds. We're trying to play the game in our favor, right? And what I wanna do is figure out for myself, should I spend my valuable time with this prospect? Is this somebody who is highly likely going to buy? Or if they're not, then I need to leave and find a real prospect or get off the phone and dial the next number. Yep. I mean, why would you waste your time, Cody, trying to sell somebody that doesn't have need, want, health, bank, or a budget? Yes. Kind of a waste of time. So we wanna take care of that all ahead of time. So here's how this sounds transitionary, transitionarily speaking from the introduction to the pre-qualifying stage. Okay. So. Mr. Prospect, the reason I'm here is because you had sent this card back, you had requested information about our new state regulated final expense programs. The reason most people send this in is because they don't wanna be a bird when they die, mm. to somebody, they somebody they love and leave behind some kind of final expense. So with that said, what were your thoughts, concerns that prompted you to even fill this card out and send it back? Mm. Yeah, I had, a, I had some family that didn't prepare recently pass and it got me thinking about really that maybe maybe i should prepare really so can you tell me more about what happened with your family yeah so it was a um yeah it was it was a, it was a grandfather heart attack um I was, about a month ago 
We had to pass the head at the funeral. Wow. Much of the family had to chip in. Really? Yeah. He had had life insurance years ago through work, but you know, when he left, he didn't get to keep it. And so then he, he lost just, it. He lost he it. Retired. Yeah. And just didn't do anything else after that. You know. What was the impact on the family having to come up with? How much was it again? Yeah, it was about fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand. Wow. Yep. Um, and we went all out and wanted to make sure that we honored him really well. But yeah, it was it was tough. I mean, people were scrounging up credit cards and money and you know so it to, just wasn't laying around no you had to like really struggle to find it we did yeah it was a group of us that had to come together just to make it work and figure it out and and it put some of us in some bad situations you know yeah, yeah i was gonna Not ask ideal. you you know they say sometimes that money is the main thing that breaks up families you know when yeah, then somebody needs money and they don't pay it back. Did you find that kind of experience happen with your grandfather? Actually, it's 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 interesting you bring that up because yeah, my my brother and I um, were yeah we we were at odds. It was it was uh, there was odd there was odds. there was okay. some um, there was some family turmoil, if you will. You know, right? Family turmoil. I mean, that's it's what happens, right? You know, it's not every day that you have to come up with such a large sum of money. It's it's terrible. True. We hope we never have to again. It was, yeah, it was not fun. <laughs> so seeing firsthand what it's like not having coverage is yes. what you're saying. Yeah. So what are you doing right now for your life insurance? Nothing yet. Nothing. Well, God forbid if you died tomorrow, how'd you pay it? Mm. I don't know. I'd probably put my family in the same situation again. Do you have kids? Then they'd really hate me. <laughs> they'd hate you. <laughs> um, I love how he's repeating things, too, that he's hearing, right? Yeah, off script. This is good. No, this is great. Um, <laughs> Can we go back a little bit and kind of yeah, tell, tell us? This is really important for let's you guys out there. So here's the thing. Life insurance, and I say life insurance, a final expense, any kind of life insurance, it all falls in the same bucket, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, there's typically something that happened early on in life. I feel like they hear this a lot. Yes, yes. That they, there's, I would call it an inception moment. Something has happened in their life where they were just walking along just fine, then boom, somebody dies, and they were either well-prepared and the person saw the benefits of that, usually that's not the case, or the dead person had no coverage, t financial turmoil, all the problems that came along with it. And it set off in motion in the prospect's mind that they don't want the same thing to happen to them if that turmoil happened, or they want to do like their mom did who was smart and prepare ahead of time. Yeah. And we need to revisit that pain. Because mm -hmm. as time passes, we kind of forget the pain. Yep. Because we need to go back to the inception point, talk about that pain, the struggle, the emotion, and then connect it with the immediacy. What are you doing right now for coverage? Mm. Most glaze over it. If they right. do hear it, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'll do my best to make yeah. sure that it doesn't happen. I'll help you today. And then they'll like no. transition something else quickly. And, and it's a matter of like minutes versus, or seconds, you know, versus right. you, you took your time. You didn't interrupt me. Um, you were sensitive to what was going on. You were intently listening. You were responding and, and re, you know, reiterating what I was saying. I mean, yeah, it was. And, and the, hopefully you all saw that and, and picked up on some of those things. Because this is somebody that's been doing it for a long time and does it really well. Thank you. And, and the other thing, too, is once we've painted that picture of, of the turmoil and the stress and the experience, then we have to ask the question, the disturbing question, what are you doing for coverage right now? Mm. And and it may sound like we're pinning them into a corner, but we are. This is not a fun topic to talk about. It's death, and it's the consequences of you dying and those consequences left to your loved ones that really matter at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to ask that question. You need to be comfortable asking disturbing questions as an agent because yes. nobody else is going to do this, and this is what is going to sell the policy. Correct. And that's why I ask them, God forbid, if you die tomorrow, how does this get taken care of? Yeah, I love that question. And so we're, ta we're con contrasting that painful experience, and many times it is painful. It's not, not everybody's well prepared. Yeah. We take that painful experience and then think about it in that context with what if the same thing happens to me? And, and, and then I'll go further and say, so, okay, so you don't have coverage, you have savings? Mm, no. No. Not a lot. And that overcomes that savings objection, right? So we've like now, now we know that's out of the way. Um, so think about your kids. If you died and it was fourteen thousand a day, everything goes up. Might be higher in the future. How would they pay for it? Mm. Are they financially ready? Definitely not. So we're making it, and this is what I, this is the need and want part of the pre-qualifying section. We 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 get to the the cornerstone 
of what drives that person and their urgency to buy today by relating it to something in the past and thinking about their loved ones. Because ultimately, life insurance is a purchase based off of love mm -hmm. for somebody else other than yourself. Yep. Another term we like to use, we have to help the client picture the hearse backed up against the front porch, right? This yeah. is all what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. right? One more thing. I'm sorry. I have so much to say, Cody. <laughs> this is great. Make sure you're doing, and this, this is something I've started implementing into my scripting um, with my, my guys and gals, um, is clarifying questions. You yeah. notice when we were talking back and forth, I'm like, they, they hated it. Yeah, I caught that. Right. Or, or I'll say things like, okay, so what I'm hearing here is you're saying that your grandpa wasn't prepared. Mm. And when you, when you make sure that you say that you understand them and you feed back what they said, people feel understood. They, they feel like this guy understands me. He understands my pain. And if you can get somebody to feel that way, they'll buy anything from you. So that's why you yeah. got to make sure, even though if you may understand it, you want to make sure they understand you understand it. Yes. So from there, what we'll do is once we've kind of uh, talked about them not being prepared and the consequences of it, then um, we'll summarize and say, so Cody, so let me make sure I'm understanding this. The reason you sent this card in is because you know you need coverage. You've lived through your grandfather dying. You saw the consequences of not being financially pre prepared. You love your children and you don't want them to go through the same thing. Does that all sound correct? That is accurate. Yes, sir. Correct? Correct. Perfect. So this is a trial close. I would call this trial close, right? Yes. So what we want to do throughout the presentation is to make sure we're on the same page with each other. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to leave behind something important. So this is my opportunity to make sure, again, that they know I understand them, but also that we're on the same page. That, in other words, they conceptually know and feel they believe they need and want this. From there, what we do um, is go into a health questioning line. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're new, you want to make sure that you're asking the questions um, deliberately and you're going line by line through all the major health questions that you run into. Don't be coy about this, okay? Don't be like, well, do you got any major health issues? <laughs> you know, Mildred's going to say, yeah, I'm pretty good except the cancer I had five years ago. Exactly. That recurred again two years ago. P perfect health. It's been, <laughs> I mean, it's been at least- A touch of cancer. Seven days. That's all I got. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Touch of cancer. Right. <laughs> that is so funny though. People be like, no, nah, I'm not in very good health. We're like, okay, do you take any meds? Well, no. I mean, I'm actually, have you ever had any surgeries? No. Any major health issues? No. But then the other person that's like, um, yeah, I'm in actually really good health recently. You know, it's like, what is recently? That even, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, I just got out of the hospital, you know. Just, but that you have to be deliberate about that because what you don't want to find out are these mystery health issues because people only answer what they're asked. That sucks to like walk through this oh, and yeah. present something and be like, oh my gosh, I forgot something and they have to go back and it's like, oh no, now it's three times more. What do you think now? It's yeah. like, nah, it's never going to work, you know? Yeah, and then you got to backpedal on what you're offering them and the price may change. Yeah. So get the stuff up front. It's going to be tedious, but it's better to take care of it now than later as much in life is. Anyway. Yes, yes. And tell the client to go grab their medications. Mm. Don't don't beg for them. Please, can you please grab the medic? No, no. Go grab your medications. If you're selling over the phone, Please spell the medications to me. Hydrochlorothiazide. Your client's not going to be able to say that. Hydrochlorothiazide. You're going to be like, whatever. Just spell it. <laughs> H-Y. And then you'll figure it out. So make yeah. sure you get them to spell it. Good. So after need, want, health, we got two more. The bank account and the budget. So the bank, the purpose of asking a bank account a question is to make sure that we have somebody we can draft their account. There are still people in America that don't have bank accounts. Yeah. And what's the point of selling them? Because you can't sell them without an automatic draft, that's why, right? That's why debit routes still exist. They do. <laughs> They're out there still. Yeah. And, um, but I'll say something along the lines. Okay, so two more questions for Miss Prospect. So about how we do payments. I don't come out like the old days where you probably grandma had the insurance man come out and collect the premiums. The way the companies require it now, companies require, put the blame on the other guy, not you. The companies would require us to set up a automatic payment comes out when your check comes next month. Doesn't need to be set up today uh, on a recurring monthly basis, either out of a local checking account or savings account or one of those cards like the Direct Express card. Which one of those do you use? Mm. So notice what I did here. Not which one did you, do you want to pay this with? Which right. one do you use? Which one do you use? Right. Notice also what I did here. Um, 
I find that sometimes people think their debit card, which is like a net spend card or a Metabank card, right? These non-checking account cards. They think they're checking accounts, right? But some companies won't take those as bank drafts. So you need to delineate the difference. A local checking account. So that kind of is more like where there's an actual bank you can go to. Mm -hmm. Many of these cards don't have that. I like that. So local checking or savings are one of those cards, like a direct express card. So so that kind of fills in all those other kind of weird payment processes. So then you can kind of get that and know ahead of time before what you're going to offer if the pre- premium, if the payment is even accepted by the company. Because you don't want to, for example, if you're a broker, you pitch a company, but the company doesn't take direct express. You want to know that ahead of time yeah. and not have the backpedal letter. Yeah. Right? What's your opinion on accepting <clears throat> direct express as an agent in general? Uh, good question. I take it. Um, I always did. I never found there was as much problems with it. The key okay. thing nowadays is social security deposit billing, which most of these carriers require. And all that is, if you don't know out there, is that um, the the billing is set up on the exact date the deposit hits Mrs. Jones' account, which, hey, if the third falls on a Saturday, they get paid Friday. With social security deposit billing, we also get it out on Friday, even though it's a day earlier. But if we didn't set that up, it would be on Monday before the draft hits. They may have spent it all or taken it on out. Co- or... uh, on, uh, on Coke and booze. Jeez. <laughs> Who knows? This day and age, you never know. I was going to say smoke and booze. Coca-Cola and booze. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of fun here since I've been We've had a lot of fun. There's been no Coke and booze. We've had a blast. <laughs> well, you know, I wouldn't put that past our clients. That's sometimes. right. So. Unfortunately not, man. We've got some stories. I'm sure y'all got some stories, too. Yes, I do. I know? can think of a few that kind of remind me of just that. We so. need to do story time with, with, with Dave someday. We do. We, yeah, I you know. I've got a few. <laughs> I love uh, it. I love it. All right, what else? This is good, man. I like this. So now that we've got the bank information out of the way, the last question we have to ask is about budget. So the question here, we, we, we want to know before we get into it, what budget range that they're able to work with, okay? Yeah. I don't want to find out the broke like 20 minutes later, yes. right? I want them to say yes to a price range Again, this all of this happens in like 15 minutes or less, right? I love how you ask this, by the way. This is good. Pay, it makes you pay attention to this right. piece. He does a really good job of this. So here's here's how the script goes. So, Cody, here's my final question to you, and it's about price. Nine out of 10 people that I see, Cody, are on a fixed income. They get one check a month, whether it's Social Security or a disability, and they got to live on that check. And the last thing that you want to do is spend more money than what you make or spend too much on a life insurance policy you can't afford. What's the point, you know, here in Missouri, a couple months, it's going to be snowing, it's going to be cold, you can't afford the heat bill. Why would you take out a plan you can't afford because your budget mm. changes, right? The best policy to have is the one that's there when you die, right? Because that's the only one to have, and that's the one that easily fits your budget. So this is my question to you. If I can qualify you for a program today, can you afford somewhere between $150 and $200 a month? No. And that's fine. The good news is I've got other programs available for you. So what if I can find you a different program in the summer between $100 and $125 a month? That's still probably a little high. Too high? Again, not a problem. So let's look a little bit lower. What if we can find you a different program that was between $75 and $100? I could probably do something like that. So when you say probably, is that like you're sure you can do $75 to $100 or do you want to go look a little lower? Maybe a little lower. How about $50 to $75? Can we do that? Yes. Perfect. I love that you clarified the probably too. Yes. Ah, probably. Yes. Because <laughs> you'll get that. Because you'll get that. Probably. I can afford that after I pay my, you know, washer and dryer off in the next 12 months. Correct. It's like, that's not why I'm here. Yes. You know, from a year from I'm here today. You're here to sell policy today. So you need f- total confirmation. So prob- So the way I t- say it is, if you hear anything other than a yes, it's a no. Mm. Maybe, probably, I think I can. Anytime you hear that, you want to say, okay, when you say you think you can, are you sure 100% that you can afford it? And if they say, well, depends on when I pay my bills. Okay, fine. Let's go lower. Again, I never argue with the client. I don't care if I get a big policy or not. I know I'll get them doing enough activity, right? Mm -hmm. But if I just serve the client and find something that's easily affordable for the budget, they'll buy from me. Yeah. It's all about activity yes close deals no matter the size yes the money takes care of itself if you do right by your clients what if they say under 50 
under 50 bucks you a month. Just keep going down. I'll keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll do 10 bucks a month. Okay. okay. I don't care. Cool. And money's money. Yeah. And coverage is coverage. So it, it does still help their family. It does. More than zero does. That's right. Something's better than nothing, yeah. as we say down the south. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and Ch- Chattanooga. Right. Chattanooga. Now, when we've gotten the client to agree they have need, want, bank that they'll let us draft, health, and budget, what do we have? Mm. Yeah, you've got it. We've got what? What you need. You got a qualified prospect. Yeah. The rest of the presentation should be pretty simple. It's like a it's like a downward slide. That makes a lot of sense to check those off. Make sure, okay, this is someone that can actually qualify. Yeah. And the rest is pretty simple because you've got them hooked. Remember, you did a really good pre-qualifying mm-hmm. uh, process. They know they need it. They feel understood. They kind of have clarity what they want to accomplish. Um, you've also talked about, you know, um, the health, you know, that they've got a pulse. <laughs> That's the easiest part of the pre-qualifying section. Yeah. And then bank the budget, right? So the rest is pretty simple. You just need to explain how your product's better than the others. And what we do in our presentation is just basically segment by describing the big, well-known brands and their shortcomings. Um, can I say those on here? Sure. Okay. So I usually start by saying, okay, so now we got that out of the way. I want to talk to you more about how our programs work. And I think the best way to do this is by describing how others work so you can better understand how ours is the best option for you. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Perfect. So the first kind of program you can get is called term life insurance. Have you heard of term before? Yes. So AARP, Globe Life, how haven't you heard of them? They just send you junk mail all the time, right? True. So here's the thing with term, and this is with any kind of term. And if you remember one thing, it's this from this conversation today. Term terminates. Mm. Term terminates. So you know what that means? Yes. You get your plan. That's term. It's great. It covers until you outlive it. And then you have no coverage whatsoever. So take a look at this. Again, showing and telling. I actually show them a brochure from AARP or Globe Life. And I'll say, you see right there? See how it says level term to 80? Mm. And it's like, don't believe me. Read this. This is their own stuff, right? And that term to 80. That's strong. Yeah. It's it just... it. And one thing I, I picked this up from an agent, I have to mention this, this is really good too. I used to I used to read it to him and just show it to him. Then I, I listened to this, um, I think Christine was her name, agent. She said, she what she started doing, she started giving it to him and said, read that to me, what it says. Mm, then they're saying it. Then they're saying it. Yes, that's I was like, good. oh, that's awesome. That's that powerful. That is awesome. So tell me what that says. The, you know, the, the premiums with this plan are in five-year level, uh, rates and, and, and go until age 80 when they cancel. And they kind of read it and they're like confused. And I said, what does that mean, Mr. Prospect? It means this cancels at 80? Yeah. So you can pay on this thing, pay on this, pay on this thing, get past 80, keel over and die the next day. You will not be covered. Your loved ones do not have protection. What do you think about that? Mm, no, no bueno. Yeah, that's basically what they say. Usually, usually a few more choice words. This is garbage, trash. Glad I always threw it away is kind of the things they say. And, that's exa- and I say, hey, that's exactly right. Why yes. would you want a plan that's not going to be there when you need it? Mm. What's the point of having insurance? But you like? said that at the beginning of the appointment too, yeah. Yes. So this is not a plan I recommend because we don't know what the future holds, right? And then to add insult to injury, the price goes up every five years. And uh, you may get to a point where you can't even afford it anymore. And sometimes I'll segment, seg you and I'll say about a, a client of mine that was paying 50 bucks a month at 75. And when she turned 76, it went up to 140. She made $800 a month in uh, um, disability, had to choose between this, prescriptions, and her rent. Mm. And that's the reality of fixed income seniors. True. And every senior fears that idea that they got to move back in with their daughter or they got to scrounge for money like that. So that's really important to share those stories if you've got them. Yes. So I've isolated out term as an option. Sometimes I'll even say another thing I'll add to that. I'll say, hey, one of the good things about term, and this is, we call this a damaging admission in sales. This is where you as a salesman admit something about a competitor is good, but you spin it in a way that shows where it's actually bad. So I'll say, hey, one of the good things about AARP is that they have a low price. It's cheap but you get what you pay for, right, Mr. Prospect? Mm. All right, so it starts cheap, but then it keeps going up and up and up to you can't afford it, and then if you outlive it, it's gone. So I'll, sometimes I'll integrate that into. That's good. So term terminates, rates go up. Not a good choice if you need permanent lifetime protection. So the second option you have is what's called guaranteed acceptance coverage. 
Um, probably seen those commercials, Colonial Pen on there. The old uh, Jeopardy guy used to do those. You remember those? They were yes. like, yeah, you remember. Yeah. So those are what's called guaranteed acceptance programs. And, and like the commercial says, you they don't require you to answer any health questions. All you got to do is fill the application out, send it back in, and you're approved for quality coverage, they say. Well, what's the catch? There's always a catch. So here, Mr. Jones, take a look at this. This is a brochure from Colonial Pen. Read that right there, what it says. Again, get them to read it. They say, uh, what does it say? So the, the coverage is full coverage after the first two years of non only non-accidental coverage or only accidental coverage the first two years. And I'll ask them, what does that mean? Well, there's no coverage for the two re- first two years if you die by natural causes, which is the most common form of kicking the bucket, right? Yes. Very rarely do people die from accidental coverage. Mm. So what's the point there? And why is that bad? Well, just like it's a risk taking out term insurance where you could outlive it, if you pick this plan, when you could get other plans that are better, what if you died suddenly, had a heart attack, got pancreatic cancer and died. You probably know people who were healthy one day and dead the next, right? And yeah. they'll usually say, yeah, yeah, that's right. So this program, dam- damaging admission, this is a perfect program if you have nine toes in the grave. That's not you. Yeah, you've had a few health issues here and there, but you're otherwise in pretty good shape. Mm. And then what leads me to what I do and how my program works. Again, part of this off script, presumes that their first day full coverage, right? Yeah. I'll say it a little differently, just as a side note, I won't go too deep into it, but if they're actually guaranteed acceptance qualified, like they're, they have oxygen, COPD, they're smoking all at the same time, they're not going anywhere other than a guaranteed acceptance plan that we have. So I'll pitch that as the best option, which it truly is. I'll uh, say, hey, you're, you should be thankful anybody will touch you with your health issues. Most won't even do it with all these. And so I'll, I'll paint it in a better light, of course. Um, but back to the, the, the final phase here, um, I tell them what we do. So now let me tell you how my plan works. I do what's called final expense whole life insurance. It's very simple to understand, and it's very good. So let me explain it to you. First of all, it's day one, 100% coverage. Because your health qualifies, you can get fully covered from the first payment date. Mm. So there's no worries, Mr. Prospect. Like, you know, what if your grandpa had one of those guaranteed acceptance plans and died in the first two years? You do not have to worry about that whatsoever. It's as certain as the sunrise. And the second benefit is the premiums never increase. So what I'm going to show you in that in price range you gave me are premiums that never go up, period, under any circumstances. You just pay your premiums. You will always have your coverage. And last but not least, this plan cannot cancel due to age or health. You can never outlive it as long as you pay your premiums. That's the catch. And you're never in a situation where you get that dreaded cancellation letter from the company because you had a term plan. So long story short, if you're looking for peace of mind and you want to know you're fully covered, then that's why my plan would work best. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, now this is the trial close here. Out of these three options here, term that cancels, uh, guaranteed acceptance that does not cover you, and then my coverage is just full first day coverage, rates never go up, can never be canceled. Which one works best for you? Mm. Option three. Option three. And that's a great choice. So what do you like about it best? I like that you asked that a little deeper. Um, I like that it uh, doesn't end. So it's never, it's, you never have yeah. live it, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, it's always with me. Yeah, that's, that's what basically everybody says. I mean, why would you choose the other ones? You're crazy to take a plan knowingly to cover final expenses when we don't know we're going to die. Everybody wants peace of mind, right? They yes. want certainty. So off script, uh, sometimes I hear from people, it's like, I know people watching it like, Dave, why are you asking them questions you already know the answer to? Those are dumb questions. You know, they're thinking like, well, of course I like yours better. What do you think, I'm an idiot? <laughs> That's how I would react. Right. But the reason we do that is we want them to admit they want it. Yes. It's not enough to assume it. I want to hear it from them. I like it because of this, because it never ends. I like yours. I want them to tell me they want it because them hearing themselves say they want it and agree that they need it is the way that you get them fully on board and committed, right? So I like that kind of tie down, if you will. Mm-hmm. It's not so much of a tie down. It's just admit to me you want it. <laughs> yeah. So so we've got them. So we go again. They're qualified. We've exhibited our, our expertise and explanation. It's a very educational presentation. 
It helps the client understand insurance. Most people are confused by it. They appreciate that. They never knew the differences with the options out there. So they already like you and have more authority or believe in your authority a little bit more. That's if you strong. Will. Yeah, it's strong. You're in a pos perfect position now to close. So the close we have is very straightforward. Again, the easiest part of the sale, not the hardest. If you've gotten this far and done everything else we've talked about, should be there's like two objections you can run through, but the rest, it should be easy. It really should be. And if you're running into difficulties in closing consistently, it's likely because you're not doing stage two with the pre-qualifying effectively. Yeah. Right? You're just not asking the tough questions. So closing is this. I I'll, I'll, I'll figure out their health. I'll go to the companies that I have. I'll select one. And then I say basically the following. So here's, I've done some digging around, Mr. Prospect. Here's what I recommend for you to get today. So the company you can qualify for is ABC Life Insurance Company. They're out of Hickson, Tennessee. They've been in business since 1984. And the reason I'm recommending them to you is because your health is outstanding. And for healthy men like you, they offer the best combination of the highest amount of coverage for the lowest amount of price. Mm. Recommendations off script, very important. Your client is now at a point they know they're about to be sold. The money is starting to come out of their wallet into your hands. And people get commitment weary here, yeah, right? Nobody want, our clients are world-class <clears throat> procrastinators. True. They're final expense prospects. They're gonna try to put this off a little more. So you need to give them um, logical reasons to justify their emotions to buy. So, hey, you need this because it's the best combination price coverage. Oh, well, I'm getting a good deal, right? I feel better about buying. Yes. So make sure you're making that right. And it, maybe it's because they have a litany of health issues or, hey, this company does great with COPD. Let them know that. That's special and important and that's differentiating enough that that might be the only thing that pushed them that little bit more to buy today. Yes. Okay? So after I explain that to them and why they should buy, I take out a clean sheet of paper, I write down three prices and I put on the top if I'm in person the face amount of coverage in big bold letters or numbers and then the premiums in little tiny numbers right uh, sounds silly but Ben Feldman who is world record holder Guinness world record holder of uh, like premium sold and applications he would literally sit down with these like wealthy business owners that ran you know big manufacturing operations and he would show the giant big check that the coverage would be for with New York Life, and then the tiny check he'd pay every month, right? Mm. And they visually showed it to him. So if it works for him with VIP, very wealthy clients, why wouldn't it work for ours yes. in our niche, right? So I like to visually show that difference. And I only show three options because we don't wanna do too much showing choice. If we show them like five, six, seven options, too confusing, it's not Starbucks, right? No doubt. Too much choice, confusion, people don't buy. They will definitely think about it. Correct. Now, if you're over the phone, um, what I would say is you can't show them anything like that, but you would say, grab a pen, write this down, $10,000. Now next to 10,000, write 51.32. So I don't say 5132, because maybe they heard it was 1531.32 instead of 51. And now you're like, well, actually it's a lot more, you know, because you didn't clarify more. So make yes. sure you write, say each numeral or each digit of the number out. So you show those three options to them and then you say, so here's your three options. Here comes a recommendation again. So my recommendation is to pick the first one or the second one, here's why. Again, people need direction. You're their assistant buyer. You need to tell them what you think they should do. They trust you, it's okay to do that. Yes. Okay? So if I say, hey, here's why you need to pick one or two. Remember when you said you just want to be cremated? You just want the Folgers can cremation, Cody? You know, just yes. that. We don't need to have a big plan necessarily because it doesn't take a lot of money, even with inflation to account for. So the first option or the second option is really going to do the job and be best for you. So my recommend, if you're my dad, I love saying that. Yes. My dad, for my mom or my grandma or my grandpa, this is what I'd recommend. So out of these three options, which one do you want to start today? Mm. And then shut up. Don't say anything until they say something. <laughs> Solid. And that's it. So good. It's that easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is, or kind of. <laughs> you broke down a lot, though, man. I mean, you walked through a lot of detail, a lot of specifics, all the things they need to know to get a qualified prospect. Um, that is one of the most detailed mock presentation videos I've ever seen. Yeah. So freaking good. So good. Thank you. 
if they want to, uh, thank you for doing that, by the way. That was very thorough, very detailed. I told you guys, man, he's systematic. Like, he's disciplined. He knows his stuff. He, he's he's uh, someone that believes in learning his craft. You know, like a yeah. lot of agents, th- they need to take this more seriously. Like, if they want to be good at this, man, they got to know all this right. stuff, man. They got to practice it and role play it and put it into effect. If they want to learn more about you and everything you're doing, how would they do that? Can I tell them a little bit about my organization? Please. What we do? Thank you very Please. much. Yeah. So davidufour.com, if you want to learn more, um, what we do a little differently than other agencies is we actually do one-on-one mentorship and coaching with our agents that come in. We're um, all in on the training side of this business because it sorely lacks. And and if you like what we do today, like this is just a sampling of the kind of uh, detail that we go That's into. Cool. So just go there, peruse the website. You'll learn more about how we help agents on final expense, uh, telesales, face-to-face, also Medicare ACA annuities as well. We've got a bunch of free resources too if you want to check that out, sales training resources, et cetera, no cost or anything. I love it. DavidDuford.com. Boom. Boom. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you being back on the podcast and the channel. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. When I first joined and decided to kind of jump in, I was really, it was kind of one foot in, one foot out. And I remember being out in the field, I went to my first home, my second home, my third home, and it was by the end of that,